The topic of sexual energy is quite taboo in our society still, leading people to block or repress their sexual energy, which can have severe consequences in a person's life, in their whole life. In this video, you're going to learn what sexual energy is, and here's a hint, it doesn't just have to do with sex. Then we're going to talk about the ways in which your sexual energy can be blocked, and then I'm going to share my top four techniques and practices to help you heal your sexual energy today. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. On to part one, what is sexual energy? <laughs> All right, so as soon as we start talking about sexual energy, usually what the person associates it with is sex, right? Like that's the most common association with sexual energy is sex. But actually sexual energy goes way beyond the act of sex, okay? And so sexual energy, I wanna get into what it really means, the root of it. Sexual energy, the way that I see it, is kind of like the big bang. <laughs> All right, so if you think about the Big Bang, that's my favorite metaphor for sexual energy because that's literally what sexual energy is. It's the central creative force of the universe. And so that Big Bang is a beautiful metaphor for you to understand sexual energy because you can start to understand the nature of it by just seeing an image of the Big Bang, all right? So that Big Bang, that, that initial explosion that gave rise to our universe, that initial outward projection that gave rise uh, to our existence, that is essentially the nature of sexual energy. Sexual energy is always expanding. It is creative in its, in its uh, force. Um, it's life-giving. So it's always looking to generate life in some form, whether that be in the actual form of a baby in your tummy, if you're a woman. So that's probably one of the biggest ways in which we can see the manifestation of sexual energy is actually in the creation of a baby of life itself. But sexual energy is, it's, it's a more diffuse energy than just sex and creating a baby. It is literally the energy that creates everything. So when you think of sexual energy, don't just think about a baby and don't just think about sex. Think about creation at its finest. So this is the same energy that you can create a business with. That's where that creative force, that creative spark comes from. If you want to, if you want to create a business, the first spark of that business is sexual energy. <laughs> if you want to paint a painting or write a book, the initial spark for that manifestation of a book or a painting is sexual energy. You see? So sexual energy is actually a central driving force that has this, it has this nature of always looking to create something, not always a baby. So literally everything in your life. All right. Now, Sexual energy, generally, when talking about sexual energy, a lot of times people uh, talk about it in terms of it being housed in the second chakra. So if you don't know what the chakra system looks like, here's a picture of it. These are the seven main chakras in the system. And when we talk about sexual energy, we're generally talking about the second chakra in the system, what's called the sacral chakra. And so this is generally, when we talk about sexual energy, this is generally what we're talking about. But I want to leave a side note here in the sense that sexual energy is actually more expansive than just, uh, than just the sexual chakra. All right. So ding, ding <laughs> side note. Okay. Yes. When we talk about sexual energy and sometimes even in this video, you may hear me say second chakra kind of interchangeably with sexual energy, but I want to leave this side note that sexual energy is not confined to just the, the sacral chakra. Okay. So when I think of sexual energy and how it circulates, the major reservoir for sexual energy is your entire pelvic area. So from the hips all the way in your pelvis, the lower abdomen, from about a couple of inches below your belly button, what in Japan is called the hara. So different cultures have different names for it. In Japan, it's called the hara. In Taoist um, alchemy, it's called the lower dantian. 
Zen. Uh, in Hindu philosophy, this is called Kundalini, all right? So there's different names, but sexual energy is generally contained or lives, likes to have its reservoir low in this pelvic area. So if you think about your pelvis, your pelvis literally makes kind of a container. The bones of the pelvis make a container that is this beautiful, beautiful um, reservoir for sexual energy, all right? That whole pelvic area. So this is generally where sexual energy moves. So you see, it's not just the second chakra. In fact, an important component of sexual energy, which is what in Hinduism is called Kundalini energy, that, that beautiful energy, which is sexual in nature also, it's actually initially housed in the first chakra. Ding, ding. You see in the base chakra, Kundalini energy is thought to be coiled. It's thought of as a serpent in, in Hinduism. It's thought to be coiled in the first chakra, right in your sacrum, in the sacral bone. That's where this energy is housed before it awakens, if it awakens in us. So then when it awakens, it starts to come up the spine spine, but initially Kundalini energy is housed in the first chakra. So you see sexual energy isn't confined to just the sexual chakra, but yes, the, the second chakra is very, very, very connected to sexual energy. But I just wanted to give you this image that when we talk about sexual energy, we are not just talking about the second chakra. You can essentially think about it as your whole, what's called the pelvic floor, your whole pelvic and hip area that is where your sexual energy is housed. And that's literally where that little big bang of sexual energy uh, occurs. All right. So think of it more in terms of first, maybe first and second chakra, right? These two chakras and the whole pelvic region. Okay. So now that we know what sexual energy is and that it's way more than just sex or the sexual act, now I want to leave a little side note here. It's a little bit of an alchemy side note, all right? So energy alchemy side note, ding, ding. <laughs> so this energy alchemy side note I want to leave you here is actually something we're going to be talking on later, uh, talking about later on in the video, but I want to leave you with this little hint, this little reminder on sexual energy. And it's a little alchemy rule that you're going to use later on in this video. And that is that if you think of the big bang as the perfect metaphor for sexual energy, you can start to understand the nature of this sexual energy. One of the primary characteristics of sexual energy is that is it is a moving energy, just like the big bang, the big bang, boom, we are still moving as a consequence of that initial explosion outward of source energy during the big bang. We're still moving in response to the big bang. So we're still going through the big bang and inside of you is the same thing. Sexual energy needs to move. It it has a primary movement force behind it, all right? Creative force that is in constant need for movement and flow, all right? This is going to come in handy later on when we talk about uh, the problems that can occur when your sexual energy blocks, okay? So, but I wanted to leave this reminder here but before we move on to part number two of the video. All right, so part two of the video is, are you blocking your sexual energy? <laughs> this is sort of a rhetorical question because for the majority of us, we do have blocks in sexual energy, even if they're only small. And the reason is that sexual energy has been repressed for a really long time, probably thousands of years, sexual energy has been repressed in all of us. And it's really been pushed down across all cultures in the world. And this has created wounds. This has created wounds that sometimes you may not realize you have, but that may be templated in you having to do with things that we carry forward from generation to generation to generation. All right. Now, remember blockages in sexual energy don't just have to do with sex, but that's a common blockage. So one of the ways in which our sexual energy begins to get blocked is actually early on in our childhood. This is especially true if someone like myself has gone through sexual trauma or abuse as a child. This is obviously true for those of us that have had that in our childhood. If you have a history of sexual abuse as a child, then of course your sexual energy uh, may be blocked because that's, that's part of the secondary trauma 
trauma of going through sexual abuse as a child. All right. So, so that's obvious. So if you have had a history of sexual abuse in your life, the likelihood that your sexual energy is blocked is pretty high. All right. But it doesn't just have to do with that. Even if you had a wonderful childhood and there's no sexual abuse in it whatsoever, the likelihood that you have been templated to repress your sexual energy is high because collectively there's a lot of shame around sexuality and around sexual energy. And that collective shame has been passed on to us, even unwillingly, you know, our parents or grandparents, uh, it, this, this has just been done unconsciously, but it's, it's been programmed in, the, in us nonetheless. But remember, sexual energy isn't just about sex itself, all right? So, so yes, sexual energy has been repressed in us having to do with sex. So for example, I'll give you a practical example because this helps a lot in understanding and clarifying the energy. For example, children, when they're little, it's very common for children to play with themselves. Very, very, masturbation is quite common for children. But you see, if a parent catches a child masturbating, the likelihood, what they're most likely going to do is they're going to tell the child, stop doing that. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? You see, they'll start shaming the child that what they're doing is wrong. And that's the start, the start of shame and guilt. And so the child starts to believe that that energy, them playing with themselves is wrong. And the shame around sexual energy starts there. All right. So there's one practical example, but there are multiple other ones. Now that you know that sexual energy isn't just sex itself, it doesn't just have to do with sex or masturbation or anything like that, that sexual activity, it also has to do with everything creative in your life. You can see how sexual energy can be be repressed in us through multiple different examples. So here's another one. Um, let's say that you were a particularly creative child when you were little and you loved to play and you had all these imaginary friends and, and, and you just had these creative, creative play sessions. But then a parent came in and said, what are you doing? Stop playing, go do your homework. You know, you're always doing useless things. <laughs> You see, this may not seem like it's repressing of sexual energy, but it is because sexual energy is all about creation, imagination. Uh, and so play is very sexual also. And so the moment the child starts to be shamed or criticized for playing, that sexual energy begins to be repressed in them. You see? So these are a couple of different examples of how sexual energy can be repressed, uh, or starting early in our childhood. So that gives you an indication that more likely than not, there are some templates inside of you, even if you didn't know that you may have blocked or repressed sexual energy. Now I've already dropped a little bit of a hint here on what could be blocking, uh, this sexual energy, but I'm, I'm going to get more specific now. There are two main blockages to sexual energy, and it pertains to two emotions that I've talked about. And that is the emotion, shame and guilt. Okay. These two emotions are the driving reasons why our sexual energy gets blocked. It's through these emotions. And I've talked about a little bit why, right? If a child is criticized for playing with themselves, if the child is criticized for playing too much, that starts to induce shame and guilt in them. And as soon as they start to feel shame and guilt, they begin to divorce themselves from their creative sexual energy. They begin to separate themselves from it because they think there's something wrong with it. A child will usually start to feel this way. Not to mention, I'm not even going into what guilt, the, the level of guilt and shame that so many of us that go through childhood sexual abuse have. All right. This was one of the most difficult things for me to unblock in my own system when I was healing from sexual trauma was the emotion shame, particularly shame, because I remember I still have vivid memories of me when I was being sexually abused, I felt such deep shame. I was four years old. I have very, very, um, um, clear memories on this. I was four years old when this started and I had just such a deep level of shame that I thought that what was happening to me was my fault. And this is really common for children who go through any type of molestation, uh, sexual abuse as children. They are not emotionally mature enough to understand what's happening to them. And so they very frequently go into these emotions, these really heavy emotions like guilt, but especially shame. Shame is a really heavy emotion. 
And so when that child starts to feel that they think what's happening to them is their fault that induces shame in them and shame and guilt will immediately repress that sexual energy. It'll immediately block it. And this was in fact, one of the hardest things for me to work through was the emotion shame when I was healing. And so these two emotions, these are the biggest reasons why your sexual energy gets blocked, but it can, you know, you can have guilt and shame, not just having to do with sexual trauma. Again, it could be guilt and shame induced by religion. For example, there's another practical example. So many of us are programmed by religion to believe that our sexual natures are wrong, that they're evil, that we should only use sexual energy when it's time to have a baby for procreation. All right. So there's a lot of religious templates shaming us for sexual energy also. Okay. So you can see these are kind of a bunch of different practical examples of how your sexual energy can get blocked, but the driving forces behind those blocks are the emotions, shame and guilt. So to go deeper on this and, and, uh, see if you can find any blockages, if you have any doubts, uh, whether you have blockages in sexual energy, I like to do journaling exercise for this. And, and I like to ask specific questions question. So you can do this journaling exercise also, and just start asking yourself. And these questions that you're asking yourself, they're not to be answered with the mind. They're, they're to be answered low in the system. Remember low pelvic pelvic area is where that sexual energy is. So when you're doing any type of sexual energy work, you're going to remove your awareness from the mind and go into the body. It's tremendously important to go into the body when you're working with sexual energy. Okay. And so I love to journal certain questions. Uh, if you're starting to uncover whether you have blockages or not, if you're starting to ask yourself, so here are some practical questions to ask yourself to see if you do have blockages in sexual energy energy. One of them, the most obvious, right? Is was I abused, sexually abused as a child? So there's, there's a big one, right? That's a pretty obvious one, but then go deeper. Uh, was I, uh, was I shamed for playing with myself sexually? So was I ever shamed by my caretakers or my parents for being a sexually active child or for playing with myself, uh, as a child? All right. So was I shamed there? Had that, has that ever happened to me, but beyond sex and, and, um, you know, masturbation and anything like that, you can also ask different questions. Another one is, was I ever criticized for being playful or for, for loving to play as a child? Uh, and a lot of us have had that, especially if we're raised by very strict parents who, um, who give priority to education, education, or, or, you know, doing things education wise and don't give a lot of priority to play time. Uh, this can come, this can be a problem. So ask yourself, was I ever criticized for playing? Uh, was I ever criticized for being creative? This is another important one. A lot of us are shamed early on. If, if for instance, we have a lot of artistic tendencies and our parents don't want us to become artists or anything like that, because they're templated to believe that you can't make a living as an artist, or you can't make a living as a creative. And so they're pushing us towards a real job or a real career, like be a doctor, be an engineer all of these kinds of things. And they're unwillingly pulling us away from our creative energy. This creates sexual energy blocks too. Okay. So here are some important questions that you, you can ask yourself journal about and ask yourself and then sit with that energy and see what you uncover. On to part three of the video, how to heal sexual energy. Um, I'm going to share with you my top four tips, practices, techniques, uh, for helping you heal sexual energy. Once you find out if you have blockages, how severe they are. Um, now you can start healing this. Even if your blockages aren't severe, it's, it's still great to go into this, uh, to these tips to kind of clear yourself of any programming that you may have inherited from the collective, from your family and from your ancestry. Okay. So these tips are great to work with, even if you don't have severe blocks in your sexual energy. Tip number one is transmuting old karma. Oh, this one's big. And it's big because essentially what has happened is 
we have created a lot of karma around sexual energy precisely because we've repressed it, we've misused it um, across our own personal history. So in, in your own individual history, in the lives and the experiences that you've had in this lifetime and in lifetimes before, the likelihood that you carry karma around the distortion of sexual energy is pretty high. Okay. But it's not just individual karma. It's also collective karma. We, we carry an enormous burden of karma having to do collective karma, having to do with repression of sexual energy across all cultures in the world. And this is especially true. And the wounding is especially deep when it comes to the feminine polarity inside of us. Okay. The feminine energy has been the most wounded by sexual energy, uh, repression and by sexual energy distortions. All right. The, the wounding is particularly deep with the feminine. The feminine has been tremendously dis honored when it comes to sexual energy. She has been dishonored for thousands and thousands of years. All right. And so this wounding, and the reason I'm talking more about the feminine is because the wounding around sexual energy is very deep in the feminine. And when I mean feminine, ding, ding, I'm going to leave a little side note here. I talk about this a lot when I'm talking about masculine and feminine, but I want to leave it here in case you've never seen any of my videos. When I talk about feminine, I'm not talking about women. And when I talk about masculine, I'm not talking about men, both men and women contain feminine and masculine energies, yin and yang energies within them. Okay. And so when I'm talking about feminine, I'm talking about the side of us that is feminine in nature, that has feminine energy. The feminine energy has been most wounded about around all of the, all of the sexual energy wounding and templates. Okay. Across thousands of years. So that's the one that I particularly focus on when working with sexual energy, especially when transmuting karma. All right. Because a lot of this karma, the masculine energy also has, has karma because it was the masculine energy that a lot of times perpetrated the, the violence and the repression on sexual energy on the feminine. So the masculine does have also wounding, but I like to focus specifically on the feminine because she is such a deep, important aspect of sexual energy, uh, sexual energy and the feminine are, are intimately connected. And so the wounding of the feminine has severely impacted our sexual energy. Now let me give some practical examples because I like to work with practical examples to show you the level of wounding that exists both individually and collectively, especially around the energy of the feminine. All right. So take the biblical uh, story of Adam and Eve, a perfect example. The biblical story of Adam and Eve tells the story of Adam and Eve being in the garden. And then suddenly Eve tempted Adam to eat from the, from the forbidden fruit tree, right? And she gave him the fruit he ate. And then they both got kicked out of the garden of Eden. So says the, the, the biblical story. Do you see how within the bib, this biblical story that's been passed on for generations and generations, can you see the dishonoring that exists already against the feminine? It was basically, according to that, to that story, it was basically Eve's fault that Adam got kicked out. And so they were just kicked out of the garden of Eden because of Eve. So she became uh, that temptress energy, that evil energy of, of trying to trick the masculine, you see? So just this biblical story, and I could tell tons of stories across mythology, not just religion, but across mythology that's been passed down from generation to generation where the feminine is consistently dishonored. Okay. And so this is just one example, but I can give more practical examples for having to do with religion. For example, a lot of us were educated in religion that, you know, especially if you were a woman, right? Because women generally have a little bit more feminine energy that men do. It's not always the case, but it, it but it's true for a large percentage. And so a lot of times women have been repressed in their sexual energy. In some religions, they're not even allowed. They have to cover up. They have to cover their heads. They have to just cover up. Why? Because again, it's that belief that the sexual nature of the feminine will tempt the masculine or do something evil to the masculine, you see? And so these are just some examples of how sexual energy, especially within the feminine has been severely repressed. And that has created significant karma that we now have programmed on top of us that we have to heal. 
So clearing and transmuting this karma is both going to occur individually and collectively. I've given a little bit of a few examples of the collective karma that we have around sexual energy, but there's also personal karma that you carry too. Maybe you've misused sexual energy in a past life, or maybe your sexual energy was severely repressed in a past life and you carry that templating, or maybe it was repressed in this lifetime in your childhood. It doesn't have to be just from past lives, but the point is that the karma that you inherit is both personal, having to do with your own personal path as a soul across multiple lifetimes, but it's also collective, having to do with all the templates that you inherit and that are programmed in your human self when you incarnate in a specific family, in a specific country, religion, culture, any group that you belong to, it contains templates for sexual energy and those templates are then programmed on top of you. So you, you have both collective and individual karma, and that karma has to be transmuted in order for the sexual energy to begin to flow more freely. Here are a couple of ways that I like doing this karma transmutation. The first way is to journal. All right. Journaling really helped me and it helped me especially uncover issues going on within me because it's easier for us to pinpoint the collective sexual energy repression. Like j just like the story of Adam and Eve that we just talked about, it's easy for us to see out there in this story that there's a repression of the feminine energy, that the feminine sexual component is being dishonored, but it's harder to see those things within us. And so for me, journaling was really important, especially with one particular aspect I want to share with you, because this may be happening to you too. I wasn't aware of how much it was easy for me to see when the feminine was being dishonored on the outside world and I would get upset and riled up about it. It was harder for me to see that within me, my own masculine energy judged the feminine and repressed her sexual nature. You see? So I didn't know that this inner dialogue was going on between my masculine and my feminine. I didn't know that my masculine, I had inherited all the templates of the masculine that pushed the feminine down when it came to sexual energy. And so journaling really helped me identify those patterns within me. All right. So journaling, writing about this stuff is really, really important. And then the second way in which I like to transmute karma is through ceremony and invocation. So once I know what I'm working on, for example, giving the example of me not realizing that my inner masculine criticized my inner feminine and her sexual energy a lot, he pushed her down. Once I found out that this was the case, I then did a ceremony. I just lit up a candle, burned some incense or some Palo Santo around me. I invoke my guides and I specifically ask them for help in transmuting this particular issue, which I had already written down in my journal. And so that that's easy. When you do a ceremony and invocation on something that you're, that you're laser focused on it, the ceremony becomes a lot uh, more powerful. All right. So I love using ceremony and invocation for working through karma. I want to leave a ding, ding side note here, uh, about this, uh, about this particular uh, transmutation of karma. That's important. When you're transmuting karma, always start with self. All right. So it, and not just with karma, with pretty much every healing, uh, technique, it's important to start with self first. Okay. So work on your individual karma first and then heal for the collective, then go out and heal for the collective karma. It works much better this way because I can never really heal out there what I don't heal in here. All right. So always start with your individual karma and then move to the more collective facets. For example, you can do a ceremony about healing the collective trauma that the masculine has caused on the feminine, uh, sexual energy. You can do that for the whole planet. All right. So there's an example of something you're doing on a collective level but don't do that work until you do the individual work first. Now to go deeper on karma, understand what it is and go deeper on knowing how to work with it and heal it. I shot a whole video on that. I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description box below. If you want to go deeper on karma and how to work with it, you can watch that video after this one. Tip number two is it may seem obvious, but this is an important one. We have to clear shame and guilt. Ding, ding. This is such a powerful one. I just talked about how uh, guilt and shame are the two primary emotional reasons why sexual energy blocks in the first place. 
And so we've got to be able to clear these emotions in order for sexual energy, for our sexual energy to heal. Now the clearing of emotions is relatively simple, right? Because the primary thing you have to do when you're, when clearing emotions is you have to feel them. All right. I have a, I have a healing mantra that I've, that I've shared before. It's one of my favorite healing mantras and it goes like this. I cannot heal what I don't feel. Okay. That's one of my favorite healing mantras. And so when it comes to processing emotions, whatever emotion, not just guilt and shame, but any emotion, you have to connect with the feeling of that emotion. And that's literally like 85% of the healing. So it's simple in the sense that to clear guilt and shame, you just have to allow yourself to, to, to go into that feeling place. And again, I'm pointing down because when we're doing this healing work, when we're doing the healing work of clearing shame and guilt of clearing sexual energy. This is very low in our system. So your awareness needs to drain from your mind down, down, down into the body and into your lower belly. It works really well. Tactile information works really well. So you can even hold your hands in your lower belly to help with the healing. All right. But the point here is that this shame and this guilt must clear beautiful souls. All right. Now, again, this is simple, but I'm, I'm not saying that it's always easy. And I know that from personal experience because shame was one of the most difficult things for me to clear from my sexual energy because it was deep. Uh, the shame was especially shame for me. It was shame, a lot of shame. Um, and, and that was not, not just because there was, it was deep and there was a lot of shame inside of me, but also because shame itself is a very, very painful emotion. It's the lowest vibrating emotion on the emotional scale, according to, to the teachers, Abraham Hicks. Um, it's the lowest densest emotion. So if you think anger is dense or rage is dense, shame is like 10 steps down in terms of the density of vibration of this emotion. So it's tremendously uncomfortable to feel such a dense emotion, but it's there. So you got it. You got to work with it and you got to sometimes uncover it because in a lot of us, the shame and the guilt is so repressed that we have difficulty accessing it. All right. So, so to access, you're just going to go deep, deep, deep into that system. You have to access this emotion, feel the emotion, allow the emotions to circulate. And that's the beginning of the clearing of these two major blockages uh, to sexual energy. Here's a pro tip, ding, ding pro tip to help you do this because sometimes working with shame and guilt is not easy. One of the best ways to help clear, to help move the energy or to help initially connect you to the emotion. I've had many clients who I can, I can sense in their energy system that it's filled with shame, but they don't know it because they can't feel it. They don't even have access consciously to that feeling state because they've been so disconnected from those two feelings. All right. So even uh, initially for a lot of us, this work can just be a work of connecting with the emotion initially and then feeling it and then processing it. One of the best ways that you could do that is by moving your hips and your pelvis. So big hip circles or dancing, moving your hips. It, this is a pro tip that's so important because you got to remember sexual energy, the reservoir for sexual energy is that hip pelvic area. So if you move, if you dance, if you move your hips, if you make circles, just move your hips, unlock that pelvis. The more that you unlock your pelvis, the more you give it physical movement, the more you then allow guilt and shame to first free itself from the blockages, then you'll allow it to circulate in your body and process a lot more quickly. If you want to go deeper on how to heal guilt and shame, if these are problematic emotions for you and you have no idea even where to start, if you need additional help for that, I shot a whole video about how to clear these two emotions. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box below so you can catch it after this video. Tip number three is honoring your sexual energy. Oh my God, this is so big. Because sexual energy has been so repressed in us, because we've been so shamed uh, around uh, sexual energy, 
sometimes there's a dishonoring of it. And so we have to get back into the practice of honoring our sexual energy. We have to recognize, retrieve, hopefully these words, because these words are coming in strongly. So, so, so feel these words as I say them. We need to retrieve the sacredness of sexual energy. All right, these are really powerful words. I'll say that again. We need to retrieve the sacredness of sexual energy. And that means we got to clean, once we clean up all the false stories, all the false things that have been said about sexual energy, that it's evil, uh, that, that, it, that, it's, uh, that it's bad for us, that all of these different things that have been said about sexual energy, once we clear that, we then have to get back to understanding sexual energy as a sacred, sacred energy that needs to be honored, all right? And again, this is particularly important having to do with the feminine component because the feminine energy is the one that's been most dishonored around sexual energy. So she needs a little bit, uh, a little bit more attention when it comes to this honoring of sexual energy. Sexual energy is sacred. It's not just, I mean, think about this. This isn't just the end. This is the energy first that makes babies. Oh, just think about the sacredness of that, of actually making another human being. How beautiful, miraculous, and sacred is that, all right? But that's only one aspect of the sacredness of sexual energy. This sexual energy builds businesses. It builds projects. It change the, changes the world. It makes beautiful paintings. It writes beautiful books. So this beautiful, beautiful energy, this is so sacred and we need to get back to honoring it. We need to retrieve that, that aspect of it. All right. So this is super, super important. Learn to honor sexual energy. But now I want to go deeper because when I say honor your sexual energy, that seems all fine and dandy, but the, the million dollar question that comes after that is how do I do that? <laughs> How do I honor sexual energy? How do I retrieve its sacredness? That, that's, that's a really important question. So I'm gonna give you some ways in which you do that. The first one is to use sexual en energy responsibly. Oh, this is so, so important. Because what has happened is through the repression and the distortion and the templates, the negative templates that we've had put on our sexual energy, a lot of times what ends up happening is we end up using sexual energy in a less responsible way. All right. And for example, I'll, I'll give you a clear, I like using clear examples. So I'll give you a clear example of what this means. One clear example, just one. Um, for example, using the act of sex. You have to be responsible in the usage of your sexual energy when it has to do with sex con sexual connection with other human beings, because that can create a lot of issues in your life. So use your sexual energy responsibly when it comes to sex. And that means that seek connection. All right. I, I love to, to give this little tip here when it has to do with the use of sexual energy. Seek connection with other human beings before you engage in actual sexual connection. So try and avoid the one night stands where you wake up in the morning and you don't even remember the person's name. All right. I've been there. I know what that feels like. It's very destructive on your energy system because what a lot of us don't realize is that when I have sex with someone, there are energy cords that are, uh, that are connecting me to that other person, even if I don't remember their names. Okay. And so this is a great little side note here is just seek connection and don't give your body or don't go into a, to a sexual activity unless you're sure you want to have a, you want to have an energy cord with the person you're having sex with. All right. So that's why I say seek connection. When you engage in sexual activity through connection with that person, energy and emotional connection with that person, then you're using your sexual energy more responsibly and there aren't any consequences both for yourself and your partners. All right. This is just one example though. You can also use uh, um, sexual connection responsibly when it comes to any other creation in your life. So use it responsibly when you're creating a business, use it, use it responsibly for anything that you're creating. All right. Use this energy responsibly and with a lot of ethics. All right. So that's one way to honor it. 
Tip number two is to honor the body. That's another way to honor, um, to honor a sexual energy is to honor your beautiful body. This is actually the foundation of Tantra and Tantra philosophy. Tantric philosophy is actually uh, the, the foundation of Tantra is to get to God through your body. You see, it's probably, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's the only tradition on the planet, but it's one of the few traditions traditions on the planet that actually recognizes the sacredness of the human body and uses that sacredness to connect uh, further with God and with creator. Most religious um, and spiritual uh, traditions on the planet actually reject the body. They want to get to God, but they reject the body. Uh, they don't want to connect with the body as a way to connect to God. Tantra is beautiful. Tantric philosophy is beautiful in that sense that they recognize that the body is God. And so to connect further with God, they go more into the body. All right. I, I love Tantra and I study Tantra. It's one of my favorite spiritual traditions. So the honoring of the body is not only the foundation of Tantra, but it should be the foundation of your practice when it comes to, um, to honoring sexual energy, because sexual energy is embodied. It's in your body. Your sexual energy materializes through your body. So the more you honor your body, the more you honor sexual energy. And, and when I mean honoring, I mean simple things like eating well, drinking lots of water, taking care of your body in a, in a basic way, you know, like eating well, drinking water, exercising. So those kinds of things, that's honoring the body, but it's deeper also. Go deeper, <laughs> okay? Specifically going deeper when it has to do with the more sexual side of your body, all right? And so one of my favorite exercises, I'm going to leave a pro tip here on how to do this. Uh, one of my favorite exercises that I use with clients that isn't particularly comfortable for the vast majority of clients. And it wasn't comfortable for me initially when I started doing this is the practice of dancing naked in front of a mirror. Ding, ding pro tip here. <laughs> I've had many clients, I've given this exercise to many clients and they come back to me and they're like, oh my God, I can only do it for like 30 seconds and then I'm so embarrassed and I want to put some clothes on and I don't like to look at my body moving in the mirror. I've had so much feedback around this, but I am telling you this practice is miraculous in its healing abilities. All right. So start doing this, take your clothes off, put some music on and start to dance in front of the mirror. Just looking at your body, honoring your body. I mean, the existence of a body of a body is a miracle, right? It's, it's just a miracle, the whole thing. But as you're moving and dancing in front of a mirror, you can start to connect with the sacredness of that body. The more that you connect with the sacredness of that body as it was made, that's why we're dancing naked, as it was made, the more you connect to that sacredness, the more you also connect to the sacredness of sexual energy. And here's another ding ding that this exercise will do. If you have any doubts on whether you have uh, any blockages in sexual energy, or if you have guilt or shame inside of you, sometimes we can't access it very easily. Guess what? Take your clothes off and start dancing in front of the mirror. And let me tell you, if you have shame or guilt stuck in your system, it is sure as hell going to come up when you're dancing naked in front of a mirror. I can guarantee you that. Okay. So this is a great test for you to see how healed, how free, how open your sexual energy is, is exactly taking note of how you feel dancing naked in front of a mirror. If you feel great, if you feel liberated, if you love what you're seeing, that's wonderful. It's a good indication that your sexual energy is moving well. But if you feel awkward, uncomfortable looking at yourself naked in the mirror, if you don't like it, if there's a level of discomfort, that's that shame and that guilt is going to start to come up. So work through it. All right. This is a great, great exercise, not only to honor sexual energy, but to also go deeper and find out if you've got blocks in sexual energy. And the last tip on how to honor sexual energy is to work closely with the feminine. Ding, ding. I've talked quite a bit about how the feminine, the feminine is so connected with sexual nature. I mean, it's so, so connected with sexual energy. First of all, because the feminine energy is an embodied energy. So the feminine is connected with the body, very deeply connected with the body. And so sexual energy is also related to the body. And so it's connected to feminine a lot. 
So work with the feminine. This feminine, I mean, even, even the word kundalini. So I talked about how different traditions talk about sexual energy in a different way. Kundalini or Shakti, as it's known in Hinduism, this energy, that's the image that they use is a coiled serpent. That's what they use for, for the image of Kundalini. Kundalini or Shakti is considered a feminine energy, you see? So there's a very strong feminine component to sexual energy. The more you learn how to work with your yin or feminine energy, the more you know how to work with and honor your sexual energy, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go deep on how to work with feminine energy because you know if you've never connected with your feminine, you're gonna need some practice, but I shot a video on that. I shot a whole video on how to connect with feminine energy and retrieve that energy inside of you. I'll leave link, a link to that in the description box below so you can catch that video after this one. The fourth tip is to circulate sexual energy. This one is absolutely crucial. And if you think about the image that I, that I, it's easy to understand if you think about that image that I gave in the beginning of the video when I was talking about sexual energy being like the big bang, like this big explosion outward. That's really the na nature of sexual energy. Sexual en energy has an incessant need to create, to give birth and to express express, all right? So it's a constantly moving energy that needs to express itself somehow, all right? And so you would never grab the energy of the Big Bang and put it in a little box. <laughs> that would not work. And it's the same thing with your sexual energy. If your sexual energy stagnates in that pelvic bowl where, where that the, the reservoir for sexual energy is, if it stagnates in your hip and pelvic region, it can create a lot of problems in your life, some of which you may not even know are being caused by stagnation of sexual energy. But you can have anywhere from a lack of creativity, so your creativity can just fall off the face of the earth because sexual energy is your creativity. So people lose their creativity. Some people have depression, uh, so they start to feel low. They go all the way into depression. Other people start to have actual physical issues. So they'll have physical issues going on with their low back, with their hips, with their pelvis. Um, some people may have reproductive issues, uh, um, you know, things going on in their lower, um, in their lower abdomen, intestinal problems. This is all, this can all be happening from a stagnation of sexual energy because the energy, the energy of the big bang is now stuck in your pelvis and it's got nowhere to go. Okay. So circulating sexual energy is extremely important. Once you start to circulate that energy, sometimes I've had people say that it's like they come alive again, because now imagine you start to circulate that sexual energy and it's like the energy of the big bang is now, is now at your disposal and your creativity comes back. You start to feel excited about life. You start to feel a lot of vitality in your body and it's all coming simply from circulating that, that sexual energy. So I'm going to give you three ways in which I love to, to circulate sexual energy. These are my three favorite ways to, to help you out further with this one. The first way is through dancing. All right. I love to use dancing as a way to circulate sexual energy because especially free form dance. All right. What free form dance does is it gets your body moving in, pl in areas and positions in, in movements that it wouldn't normally move. So usually in everyday life, we get up out of bed, we stand up, we walk, we sit down at our desks, we stand up, we walk. And, and so we, we move very much in this, in this forward, backward kind of, of plane. And that's the way that we normally move in everyday life. But when you start to dance and when you, especially freeform dance, you're now moving your body in circular rays, a lot of rotation, a lot of movement that your body may not do in a regular everyday life. And so the moment, the moment you start to move the body again, movement is very helpful to circulate sexual energy because your sexual energy is embodied. So the more you move your body, uh, the more you circulate sexual energy, especially through dance, because there's a lot of rotational movements, uh, movements that you don't usually do in everyday life. So I love to use dancing. I dance every night. It's a part of my nightly routine and it's a wonderful way to keep that sexual energy moving. The second way is through hip movements, specifically hip movements. So if you remember, sexual energy is sitting in that pelvic, that whole pelvic bowl. That is the pelvic bowl that compromises your pelvis, your lower back and your hips. Okay. That is what's holding the sexual energy. So the more I move my hips, you can't really see me right now, but I'm doing hip circles. 
So when you start to move your hips, hip circles, some people like to belly dance, just move, move, move the hips, even if it's just in circles, but move the hips as best you can. The more you move your hips and your pelvis, the more you'll start, you're, you'll basically start to shake the container of sexual energy. And so that sexual energy will free itself. All right. And here's a little pro tip. Ding, ding. If you're in doubt about whether your sexual energy is blocked or not, one of the easiest way to tell is how you move your hips and your pelvis. <laughs> so if you feel locked, if you feel pain or locked or tight in your low back, pelvis or hip area, this sexual energy is not circulating properly. So this is a great test, little test to show you whether you're blocked in your sexual energy or not. Move those hips, move, move, move. I do hip movements every single day just to keep my, my sexual energy moving freely. And the third way I love to, to uh, move uh, sexual energy is through um, the use of a specific type of meditation. All right. This is a tantric meditation that I use. And essentially what you're doing is you're sitting in meditation. You can have some music on, or you can do it without music. I like doing it with music. And what you're going to do is you're going to start to rock your pelvis. You're sitting in meditation, but you're starting to rock your pelvis slightly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That rocking is going to tip off sexual energy. It's going to start the circulation of sexual energy. And then what you're going to do is as you're tipping your pelvis back and forth, you're going to visualize that sexual energy coming up your spine, up, 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 up the spine. You can visual that, visualize this in any way you want, like a white light. Some people like to visualize their sexual energy like fire. It, it depends on you do it the way you want to do it but you're bringing through the power of your awareness, you're bringing that sexual energy up your spine, up your spine, up your spine, and it's going to shoot out the top of your head, your crown chakra. And then when it shoots out the top of the head, you're going to visualize that sexual energy falling on your energy system, on your aura. Some people like to, to do that visualization in the form of raining. So it feels like your, your sexual energy comes out of the top of your head and now it starts to rain on your aura. That's a great way of seeing it. Um, or you can, you can visualize this in any way you want. The point is the energy comes out of the top of the head, but then it doesn't go out. It doesn't dissipate. You never dissipate sexual energy. Sexual energy is to be recycled and used. So it shoots out the top of your head and then it rains down on your energy system to be reabsorbed again. This is a great tantric meditation. This is a beautiful way for you to circulate energy in meditation form, aside from the other practices that I just shared with you. All right, beautiful soul. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. If you feel blocked in your sexual energy, let me know. I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website to download my popular guided meditations. And don't forget these videos that I mentioned in this video. These are going to be great for continuing your viewing after this one. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.